ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಇದು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇದಾದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಆಗಿದೆಯಾ ಹಲೋ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ದ ಡಯಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ಹೌ ವಿ ಡಯಗ್ನೋಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ the prevention aspect uh, the ecv the uh, external uh, external cephalic, cephalic version how to prevent breach and convert it into a cephalic so that we can have a good uh, uh, um, outcome so now let us uh, move on to the further management of breach presentation so this is all i have finished now other methods of correcting breach why is it that huh yes sir eta so other methods of breach uh, correcting the breach are uh, we can also use acupuncture acoustic stimulation hypnosis and postural treatment so management if version fails or contraindicated is you got to reassess the case and also look on to the age of the mother then you see if there are any associated complicating factors and also the size of the baby and also adequacy of the pelvis has to be checked for further management then the modes of delivery will be there are two options of modes of delivery one is to allow for vaginal breach delivery or to perform elective cesarean section in the selected cases so there are still controversies regarding planned cesarean section in all cases of breach so the american uh, because of the greater uh, and they have observed that greater neonatal morbidity is seen in vaginal breach delivery but after the um, trial breach trial the american college of obstetricians gynecologists have concluded that except in cases of advanced labor and imminent delivery which are not otherwise uh, uh, affected women with persistent singleton breach presentation at term should be delivered by cesarean section the evaluation and uh, selection criteria for vaginal breach delivery the prerequisites in other ways the prerequisites are labor must be undergone in hospital with capabilities for emergency cs 
that is uh, it should be in atashri ke center and the pediatrician and the anesthesia support must be readily available during the labor and so there should be in house pediatrician and anesthetist and also the capabilities of usg and electronic fetal monitoring are also essential and the presentation of two obstetricians experienced in the evaluation and the management of vaginal birth delivery should be available in house uh, when you allow the breach for vaginal delivery the initial evaluation can be done through ultrasound one is you will know the gestational age you will also know the estimated fetal weight and also you can rule out the fetal anomalies so that you can prevent unwanted cesarean section so if you find any fetal and major lethal fetal anomalies then you can always um, uh, allow her for vaginal uh, breech delivery and also you, it will also determine the type and position of the breech whether it is a complete breech or an incomplete breech and also the position whether it is a favorable position or what so and uh, again hyper extension of the head can also be uh, made out by measuring the cranio spinal angle the whenever you are uh, giving a trial of uh, breech delivery you should fulfill the following criteria she should have been term that is 37 completed weeks it should be either frank or complete breech buttocks below the feet so weight should be between 1.5 to 3.5 not a too premature baby you cannot allow and it should be a well flexed head no fetal pelvic disproportion and there should not be any obstetric indication for cesarean section for example like previous lses or a placenta previa of a grade 2 or 3 so etc and there should there should not be any fetal growth restriction or iugia no contraindications for vaginal birth like it there is no uh, contracted pelvis Uh, or uh, it is associated with a tumor etc and informed consent is a must assessment of the vaginal breech delivery can be assessed the cause you got to exclude placenta previa multiple pregnancy fibroid pelvic tumors oligomenias polyhedramnias hydrocephalus anencephaly and other congenital abnormalities also assessment of the fetal condition exclude intrauterine growth risk, restriction and uh, uh, any uh, other abnormality should be seen especially rh in comparability should be excluded tayla slide okay i then assess the you know either closer risk and benefits of vaginal breech delivery the fetus like uh, what will be the risk uh, risks are poor condition at the uh, birth like there may be some uh, injuries to the uh, birth or there can be any uh, like internal uh, intracranial hemorrhage medullary coning so, severance of the spinal cord brachial plexus injury which is very very common during vaginal uh, assisted vaginal breech delivery and occipital diastasis fracture of the long bones and also the uh, epiphyseal separation can be there and rupture of the internal organs is very much common when you apply traction on the abdomen so especially the liver and the spleen can rupture long term neurological damage will also be there because of the birth asphyxia genital damage if it is a especially in the male fetus and hypopituitarism damage to the mouth and pharynx benefit says you could have, uh, i mean you you would definitely uh, the um, the morbidity and the mortality associated with cesarean section is the only uh, identifiable benefit for the uh, 
mother as well as to the baby. So these are the some of the, this picture depicts you what are the injuries uh, to the fetus during vaginal uh, breech delivery. There can be cerebral contusion, intra-hemorrhage, eye injury, facial laceration, clavicular fracture, scrotal hematoma, or hypoxic brain damage, skull fracture, damage or deafness, and then uh, so, uh, the hematomas, shoulder dislocation or Ebb's palsy, humerus fracture of the internal organ, uh, fracture of humerus, hip uh, dislocation or fracture of femur. So this is the um, slide showing you the comparison of risk to the mother uh, uh, when uh, the vaginal, uh, when you consider the vaginal uh, breech delivery versus cesarean risk of vaginal breech delivery for the mother, there can be per perineal laceration, discomfort and morbidity will be there because of the perineal lacerations and there can be a difficult birth experience. Risk of cesarean section for the mother is short. It is a short-term morbidity like increased postpartum pyrexia, increased need for blood transmission, increased maternal mortality rate, reduction in future fertility, and uh, difficult birth experience. And uh, also the uh, entering the uh, next pregnancy, she will have a uh, uh, scarred uterus. So. Uh, the next pregnancy will be on a scarred uterus, which has its own uh, problems. Ultrasound, I told you, to it will detect the gestational age, fetal weight, and also estimate the fetal weight can be assessed with uh, plus or minus 100 to 200 grams. Uh, the, so that would be a discrepancy of more than 15% uh, from the body weight and uh, the, it is a valuable uh, tool of diagnosing congenital abnormalities and also for uh, detecting fetal neck uh, uh, hyperextension that is which is very very important in the management of breech delivery and then the uh, fetal pelvic index should be assessed by maternal pelvimetry plus by the fetal biometry. Uh, if a uh, sum of AP and uh, anteroposterior and transverse diameters of pelvic inlet is more than 22 centimeters and that of the mid pelvis is more than 20 centimeters, then it is considered as adequate pelvic size. So this is the um, uh, slide showing you minimal pelvic measurements for breach. Uh, approximation like inlet the AP should be 11 centimeter transfer should be 12 centimeter and midline um, the midline pelvic diameter AP should be 11.5 and transfer should be 10 centimeters so hyper extension of the fetal head so like this, this can be uh, fully flexed or it can be mildly deflexed head or it can be um, uh, like this uh, fully flexed head, head will be favorable for uh, breech delivery. So the hyper extended head with the deflection angle uh, should be more than 90 degrees. The CT pelvimetry, although it is more expensive procedure, it offers a means of assessing the pelvic dimensions with similar accuracy as X-ray pelvimetry, but at much reduced radiation dose. Again, MRI pelvimetry, this is an even more expensive and less widely available investigation, which has the advantage of uh, no ionizing radiation. Now coming to the uh, scoring, say, prognostic, uh, how to assess the prognostic, how to prognosticate this uh, will be by the scoring system that is uh, uh, Jaduchni Andros prognostic scoring system, which consists of the, it takes into account the gestational age parity, estimated fetal weight and previous uh, uh, breach deliveries. So the more favorable will be 
one and two. That is the gestational age more than 38 or less than uh, 38 weeks, multiparous women and the fetal size being less than 3.1. And if she has a multi being a multi with previous breech deliveries, the score is better. So uh, the if the score is less than three, then it's better to go for cesarean section. If the score is more than five, you can give a trial of vaginal delivery. If uh, the score is in between uh, like four equivocal, then you got to reevaluate the patient. Similarly, you have a modified uh, uh, ZDA scoring system where a score of more than three is required for a trial of labor if the clinical uh, 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 pelvimetry is adequate. So this is the one modification where they considered parity. So multi-parity has, uh, has more score. Previous vaginal birth has more score. Estimated fetal weight, I told you, average is 3 kgs. It is in pounds, but we take it as average as 3 kg. Station of the head. A lower will be better score compared to the uh, higher score. Dilatation, of course, is more than 4 centimeter has got a better scoring. Similarly, we have the Western scoring system where even the pelvimetry is taken into account along with the estimated feet weight uh, presentations of what's under the previous uh, scoring system. So this is uh, definitely a good scoring system. One can adopt. Okay. So management of breach, uh, vaginal breach delivery. So it has got, uh, you know that like any other uh, breach, uh, any other uh, labor, first stage, second stage and third stage. First stage, the management will be the guidelines for monitoring the high-risk fetus or are applied here also. So, and then the cervical dilatation and descent of the presenting part should be plotted in a partogram. Patient should be in the bed to preserve the membrane. So, don't allow her to move around because ill-fitting head with a sausage-shaped uh, bag of membranes, if they rupture, then what is the uh, this thing? She can have a cart prolapse. So that's why she has to be uh, confined to the bed. Allow her only liquid diet because we don't know when she we may decide on to her uh, for cesarean section. Oxytocin can be used in, if the contractions are not sufficient enough. Then you can use to augment labor. There is no contraindication for that. Then exclude, uh, suppose if there is a rupture of membranes, you got to exclude the umbilical cord prolapse. Then look for the appearance of meconium before the fetus uh, is in the pelvis. It is a possible sign of fetal compromise. Already if the fetus has descended down and she is fully dilated, then because of the pressure, if the fetus is passing meconium, that is not significant. But if the presentic part is very high up and uh, then... Uh, probably you have to, if there is a meconium, that is very significant. So that indicates a fetal distress. So then the, what about the analgesia? Analgesia always, you can give some narcotic or inhalation or put and block anesthesia. Epidural anesthesia is favorable. Sometimes we do consider general anesthesia. Suppose if there is an entrapment or if you want to do a breach extraction, we do give uh, the general anesthesia. The premature diagnosis of full dilatation of the cervix leading to attempts to deliver that fetus of an undilated uh, uh, cervix with an extended uh, harm will result in uh, head entrapment. Okay, so that has to be kept in mind. So you got to uh, wait till the full dilatation and also the baby should come to the pelvis. On her own, she has the, matern uh, the maternal efforts to push the pelvis should be there while delivering. Don't be hasty in delivering. That's the reason why if she has got a footling presentation, then it is not favorable for uh, assisted vaginal delivery because in footling presentation, one or the both the feet would have come, come, uh, come out but the cervix would not have dilated well. Whereas in a frank breach, the uh, buttocks act as a 
dilator like in vertex that's why it is more favorable for vaginal breach delivery compared to uh, incomplete uh, the complete breach where uh, the, there is uh, both the uh, the fetus would have come in and also the legs will be present it is not a good cervical dilator which is a frank breach acts as a good cervical dilator so those points should be taken into consideration while uh, you are this thing i told you that induction of labor and augmentation labor you can do in breach presentation there is no contra uh, contra indication for augmentation second stage so now coming to the second stage there are here you please you concentrate on these three things there are three methods of a general uh, breach delivery one is spontaneous breach delivery second one is assisted breach delivery that is it's also known as partial breach extraction and third is the total breach extraction so let us look at what is spontaneous breach delivery it is the fetus is expelled entirely spontaneously without any traction or manipulation by the um, uh, healthcare uh, provider other than support of the infant so we just only support the fetus the whole thing is expelled entirely by the uh, maternal uh, maternal efforts or the uterine contractions whereas assisted breech delivery or the breech breech extraction is the fetus is delivered uh, spontaneously as far as the umbilicus so the only the breech is pushed out but the there could have been a frank breech then that time you require so up to the umbilicus it is spontaneously delivered from the umbilicus onwards the you require an assistance so the rest of the body is delivered with the operated traction and assisted maneuvers with or without maternal expulsive efforts that is assisted uh, breech delivery then total breech extraction is where the entire body of the infant is extracted by the obstetrician that is in case of a uh, elective cesarean section we we extract or in case of it it is uh, uh, entrapped and then we do a rescue surgery where we push in and again extract the uh, breech extraction or sometimes even in the assisted vaginal breech delivery probably you have to do some manipulations and extract the uh, breech so third stage is usual the placenta is usually expelled out soon after the delivery of the head of the uh head of the uh, baby and if prophylactic oxytocin can be given at the delivery of the head of the baby now the coming to the uh, let us go in detail about the assisted breech delivery so the principle should be you should never be hasty in doing the uh, delivery never pull from below but push from above patient should be brought to the edge of the table placed in a lithotomy position exaggerated lithotomy position is ideal so that you the uh, the diameters of pelvis are increased in an exaggerated lithotomy position you should have full surgical asepsis bladder should be bladder and bowel both should be emptied then the vulva and the anus are so when the vulva and uh, anus are getting distended by the breech a medial lateral episiotomy is given to facilitate the descent of the breech at the time of so normally in the uh, vertex presentation we give at the time of crowning of the head in breech it should be the at the time of crowning of the breech the next would be uh, i told you the it should be given in all primary gravidus and also in some of the multi gravida it straightens the birth canal curve eliminates pressure on the after coming head and easier for any uh, manipulations timing of the episode of i told you it should be given at the time of crowning of the breech then the further uh, once the buttocks are seen at the vulva further descent of the uh, anterior buttock occurs then both so first anterior then uh, both the buttocks come into the view as well as the anterior shoulder so here anterior shoulder is also seen so the buttocks are uh, expelled by voluntary 
maternal efforts and then the fetus so then you got to, here you got to assist usually normally the back rotates on its own the fetal sacrum rotates anteriorly here see the rotation if it is not rotated you can rotate manually that is where you are going to assist then once the breech has come out pull out the legs like this and then you see the scapula then you have to rotate the body anteriorly like this so that the back of the um, uh, baby will be facing you and here once the baby is out you got to cover the baby with a towel don't uh, allow for a premature uh, stimulation okay so that should that is very very important otherwise it will take a premature tactile stimulation with so it can take premature breath then once the uh, delivery is there uh, then you have to deliver the anterior shoulder first deliver the anterior shoulder then deliver the posterior shoulder the trunk is allowed to hang on its own and encourage the baby to descend on its own don't do any manipulations there then once the nape of the neck is uh, seen so what is the now the delivery so it is in three places delivery of the buttocks delivery of the shoulders then the delivery of the after coming head what is the delivery of the principle in delivering the after coming head you have to maintain a full flexion so the assistant should give the uh, supra pubic uh, pressure and flex the uh, head avoidance of haste controlled delivery of the head should be is an ideal so don't uh, just pull it you have to control give a supra pubic pressure so that make the head, uh, uh, full flexion of the head and then once that is done and the nape of the neck is well seen then you can uh, do the burn motion technique or smelly weight technique of delivering the uh, after coming head one is so the main burn motion maintain maintain flexion and encourage descent of the head by means of fetal body weight alone you have you must allow the baby that's why you have to bring the uh, uh, the mother to the edge of the table allow it to hang by itself by its own weight then uh, obstetrician stands with his back to the patient's left leg like this so you have to allow the Uh, baby to hang of course you have to cover it with the towel then once the nape of the neck is seen catch hold of the uh, two uh, feet and like an arc you uh, put it on the give a little traction and put it on the abdomen okay this is the burn motion method of delivering the baby otherwise you can also apply a forceps Uh, piper's forceps is the special forceps which doesn't have a pelvic curve so that is applied to the baby you have to hold the baby's trunk with a towel then from below you are, from below you apply the piper forceps like this first the right and then the left blade so like this so it so it prevents hyper extension of the head full body rests on the shank i held in the towel continuous downward traction applied until the chin appears then outward so hand of the forceps are elevated so that delivery occurs by flexion of the head now the other method is morisius milleviet maneuver child is placed on the left arm of the obstetrician index and the third finger of the left arm is placed on the here yeah, index and this thing has placed on the malar eminences this will maintain the attitude of uh, flexion so the index and fourth finger of right arm is placed on the shoulders here right arm is placed on the shoulder here the left arm it supports the uh, baby and also the index and the third finger will put uh, pressure on the malar eminence and right hand will put a pressure on this thing and the assistant will give you supra pubic pressure so that it will uh, uh, help in the uh, flexion of the head third finger pressed against the occiput aids in the flexion so it acts as a splint uh, for the baby
So this is a Mauricio Smilevay technique of delivering the baby. Next, the management of complicated breach. Uh, that means breach if it gets arrested at the pelvic rate. What are the causes would be big baby with extended head, weak uterine contraction, rigid perineum or outright contraction. Management is there is no place for a watch, watchful expectancy. If there is an outlet contracture, better to do a cesarean section. So if there is an arrest due to extension of the legs, give a extension of the head, give a liberal episiotomy and frontal pressure and single groin traction. So you can, or you can also use a breech hook and give a traction with the forefinger in the groin and the other hand grasp the wrist, which permits more traction to be applied. This is one method for extended legs. And once the breach comes down, then you have to apply Epinard's maneuver here. You flex the breach here, bring down the foot and then deliver. So, or you can also give a double traction like four fingers in each groin or you can also use the breech hook and deliver. So when a breech gets arrested at the pelvic cavity, I told you it is due to contracted pelvis, weak uterine contract, big baby, uh, multigravida with a pendulous abdomen. So there also it will be a problem. So there the, the, the extraction of the legs so I told you in double foot link presentation, feet is grasped and brought down. In frank breach, Pinard's maneuver is used. This is the, if you go there, the extended here at the knee, you give a tap and then flex the head, catch hold of the foot and bring it down like this. This is a Pinard's maneuver. So the method of holding the thigh during traction like this. So you should not, you will avoid injuries or the dislocations. See, extraction of the trunk should be like this. Uh, and the two should be, uh, fingers should be placed at the sacrum. Otherwise you can cause uh, the dislocation. So extraction of the arms can be done. So the breech is delivered. There is a hyperextended uh, arms. So that can be delivered by flexing the uh, limbs and then delivering. So like this, one arm is delivered. Next is the right arm. Both arms are delivered. Especially in the case of a uh, nuchal arms. So if the anterior arm cannot be brought out as anterior, rotation of the trunk is carried out, bring the anterior arm into the hollow of the sacrum where it can be easily reached and brought out. See, normally in the vertex also, the first, the anterior shoulder is born, later uh, the posterior shoulder. Why? That is because the anterior shoulder is at a higher level than the posterior shoulder. So that is the reason in this, suppose you can't deliver the anterior shoulder. Anterior shoulder, which is in the anterior, should be, the baby should be rotated and brought to the posterior. Then that arm should be uh, delivered from the posterior root. Then again, you turn and then the posterior arm again, turn back to posterior and deliver that arm. That is known as Lausitz maneuver rotation and delivery. See, like this. So, you have to rotate like this. Bring the anterior arm posteriorly and then deliver posteriorly. And the posterior arm is brought anterior, the anterior, posterior arm which is brought anterior, again it is brought to posterior and then delivered. So, that is Lausitz maneuver. See, like this. Then the uh, deliver the uh, 
after coming head by supra pubic uh, either by burn marshall method or by the smilevate methods or you can also use the forceps pipus forceps for the it is a special forceps which doesn't have a pelvic curve unlike the rig, uh, rigless forceps which has got both uh, pelvic and the cephalic curve so whenever there are mucal displacement of the card the again it can get entrapped management is rotate the baby trunk in the direction in which the baby first fist is pointing so you have to locate the fist rotate the baby to that side bring down that arm and again uh, the next again you have to identify the fist on the next side in that direction you have to go with the second one So in case of bilateral mucal arms, body should be rotated in both directions, maybe uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise, and bring down the, uh, the mucal arms. Now come to another entity. Suppose if you are, because the in breach the congenital anomalies are more, especially the hydrocephalic head. That is the reason why it has adopted the breach presentation. so how to deliver this suppose if it is uh, uh, i mean hydrocephalus so there is uh, if the mother doesn't uh, agree to go post delivery for a shunting and other surgeries it is, of course some surgeries can be done on the hydrocephalic head like shunting but if the mother is not willing for that then he, she opts for a vaginal delivery then the upcoming head may pose a problem in case of a hydrocephalic head because it is a large head so there what you have to do is you can do a spinal tapping once the the baby here we are not worried about the survival survival of the baby we are only want to give her a, a vaginal delivery so here you can do a spinal tapping opening made in the spinal canal and elastic gum catheter is pushed up to the cranium and delivery should be left to the natural forces drain out all the liquor and then you can uh, the head will shrink collapse and automatically it will deliver uh, normally or you can also deliver up to the uh, uh, this one uh, the nape of the neck and again you can also go ahead and then tap it and uh, take out the ventricle or even paracentesis can be done abdominal route you can ultrasound guided you have to empty the bladder then go there go and then we ultrasound guided paracentesis so that liquor can be uh, tapped and reduced so then the fetus skull will collapse and that head once it diminishes in size automatically it can be delivered out so that method also can be done either vaginal route or by the paracentesis in the abdominal route so delivery of the head in an incomplete dilated cervix especially a preterm delivery or a premature bearing down so it is very difficult because the cervix would have constricted constricted using the finger like an improvised shoe horn baby is delivered by combined pressure from above and traction from below here it's only for a either lethal uh, babies but not for a viable uh, baby or um, uh, if they are uh, uh, keen on the uh, baby cannot do or you can give two deep lateral incisions on the cervix that 2 o'clock and 6 of perhaps incision but it is not advisable because uh, this these all this destructive surgeries earlier we used to do when the cesarean section morbidity and mortality was very high antibiotic use Uh, was not that much in vogue, but at present we are not going to uh, do. Uh, so it is an incompletely dilated cervix. Better to uh, do uh, with the scissor section rather than trying all this uh, destructive uh, construction. Darham incision it can extend and re- leads to uh, the rupture, uterine uh, calporexis and uterine rupture.
So occipital posterior position of the occipital brain here. So here two fingers are placed over the infant shoulders. Baby is pulled down posteriorly until the chin under the area. It is like face to pubic delivery. Uh, in a reverse order, you have to deliver. Okay. So what do you mean by abdominal rescue? It is nothing but part of the fetus is delivered out. The head or the shoulders are entrapped uh, in the pelvic, at the pelvic brim. Then what is the thing? The baby fetal heart is good. Then what you have to do is push the feet back to the uterus and then deliver her by cesarean section. Following a failed vaginal, this is following a failed vaginal delivery. Like only the part Part of the fetus has come out and rest of the fetus is trapped inside. Then you push back the fetus which is delivered and then replace it back into the uterine cavity. Then deliver high by cesarean section. That is a abdominal rescue. So elective cesarean section, what are the uh, indications for elective cesarean uh, delivery? One is maternal indication if you suspect a fetal pelvic disproportion, if she is having a bad obstetric history, if she is having absence of onset of spontaneous labor, uterine dysfunctions, long-term sterility, history of abnormal labor or perennial death. Previously, she had a bad obstetric history or a perennial. Last time, breach presentation, there was a death of the fetus. Then second gravida, just because she's the second gravida, you cannot allow her for vaginal delivery. You have to think of cesarean section, any associated medical condition, elderly primary gravida, if there is a placenta previa, then you are, these are the maternal indication to go ahead with the elective cesarean section. Then the fetal indications will be a large fetus. If there is a fetal distress, preterm, again, true preterm also should not be delivered vaginally, but it should be delivered by uh, uh, the cesarean section. If there is a footling presentation, I told you, footling presentation will lead to uh, the undilated cervix. So naturally, you will have problem in delivering the shoulders and after coming in. That's the reason why you have to go ahead with the uh, cesarean section. Hyperextension of the fetal head. Again, when there is a hyperextension, naturally, unless the fetal, uh, the diameter of the uh, engaging diameter will be large and it is difficult to deliver. So it has to be the head has to be in a flexed uh, uh, attitude so that your uh, suboccipital pragmatic diameter will come into the pelvic pelvis and that can be delivered easily uh, otherwise it becomes uh, the there will be difficulty in delivery of the baby and you may lose the baby or there can be severe morb morbidity on the baby card prolapse whenever there is a card prolapse again immediately you have to push the card back and deliver her by cesarean section or post-mature fetus. Again, because the molding of the fetus will not take place in a post-mature fetus, that's the reason why. So if it is 42 and above, better to go ahead directly to her cesarean section. If there is a fetal compromise, IUGR or FGR fetus, again, that also already placental insufficiency is there. You It cannot take the stress of uh, vaginal delivery, better to deliver by cesarean section. Floating breach with meconium strained like a, so that is an again indication for cesarean section. Stimulation of uh, delivery of the breach at cesarean section. So the lower uterine transverse incision is the ideal incision. Lower segment only you can go. No need for any classical cesarean section. Sometimes a J-shaped or inverted T-shaped incision have to be given in an emergency, but try to take a liberal incision. Don't be too much uh, uh, conduce on the uh, scar. Okay, delivery, a technique of delivery of fetus. First, it's like same as vaginal delivery. First, you have to deliver the buttocks and trunk. Next, delivery of the shoulders and arms. Next comes the delivery of the after coming head by button martial technique. Or you can also use a forceps. That is our uh, regular regular forceps can be used. No need for any pipus forceps or jaw flexion and shoulder traction can be used and delivered at the fetus. So same principles holds good here also in the delivery of the uh, breach, even at cesarean section.
to conclude uh, women's choice of uh, uh, on the type of delivery uh, a practical consideration in performance is there in delivery at term here lower segment should be uh, the uh, choice of incision with the term breech presentation fetal head may become entrapped in the uterine incision at the point of delivery as the lower uterine segment contracts rapidly force that displaces the head laterally should be avoided to prevent brachial plexus injury and again after coming head should be brought into the operative field by pressure direction on the fundus where possible uterine relaxation with uterine relaxant or tocolytic agents are only uh, rarely necessary to effect delivery and then sometimes there can be uh, certain breaches in the uh, incision lacerations can occur it can go a little uh, rapid but that uh, doesn't matter and if there is a pause, if there is any difficulty in delivering the shoulders or the head you can also give a uh, j shaped incision or inverted t shaped incision on the lower segment and later you can switch it conclude a uh, woman's choice on the type of delivery is to be respected sincerely so you have to give the choice to the mother explain both the risk and uh, benefits give the choice to the mother and honest attempt should be made uh, in this respect uh, while uh, briefing her breech presentation uh, presenting infants in frank or complete presentation at 36 to 42 weeks are potential candidates for a trial of labor if strict criteria are satisfied double footling breach is likely to be at a greater risk for cord prolapse these presentations require accurate evaluation by ultrasound radiographic techniques the increased use of cesarean delivery uh, increase uh, has really uh, has really reduced the incidence of uh, the perinatal uh, injury and the mor morbidity of course the inc incidence of uh, cesarean section on the maternal uh, indication has increased but the as far as the perinatal uh, morbidity and mortality is considered definitely cesarean scores over the uh, veg assisted vaginal breech delivery physicians in training should also develop the skills necessary to accomplish a safe vaginal delivery by the vaginal route in order to adequately prepare them to offer both options to their patients in accord accordance with the demand of each individual case we should anticipate decreased overall use of cesarean delivery for term breech delivery as more and more obstetrical uh, units provide comprehensive services including continuous electronic fetal monitoring 24 availability of anesthesia and neonatal intensive care breech presentation during labor is a high risk situation and requires liberal use of cesarean delivery however certain subgroups of breech presentation or uh, at low risk and vaginal delivery can, may be uh, applied here thank you very much for your patience here in santosh santosh yeah hope you have understood breech presentation anyway you are going to have uh, the dummy pelvis demonstration there again we are going to teach you about the uh, uh, breech uh, the mechanism of breech delivery uh, but uh, with this i think i conclude uh, the breech presentation thank you all in topic in india